Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we come before you humbly, Lord God, before your throne on tonight, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. <clears throat> we pray that every eye be open, every ear be listening and unplugged, Lord God, to the fruitful and wondrous word of God, through the gospel, the power of the Holy Spirit. Father God, we pray that the words be made alive, Lord God, to each and every individual that is watching it on today, each and every individual that hears by faith that something takes root in them, a seed is planted, and that they can bear fruit, Father God, and witness your word, Lord God, that they can multiply, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, as we preach and teach the gospel, as we evangelize, Father God, as we be fruitful and multiply in your name, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. I pray, Lord God, that this word touches whoever it needs to touch and bless whoever it needs to bless, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord God. I lift you up, Lord God, and I magnify and praise your holy name on today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. So today I am doing the five-fold ministry. Amen, the five-fold ministry. And I will be teaching on evangelism and teaching. I pray that everyone can hear me. Evangelism and teaching on today. So the five-fold ministry, that is uh, the, apost the um, apostolic, which is apostles, the prophetic, which is the prophets and the prophetess evangelism teachers pastors bishops okay those are part of the fivefold ministry and of course because we are to imitate christ because we have the the spirit of christ in us amen that means that we can walk in these functions uh, um we are grace to a certain capacity depending on how god wants to call that individual who god wants to grace this to. that means some may have it on a higher level or a higher magnitude but it's just according to how god wants to do it God is the author and the finisher. He knows our lives. He knows how he wants to put it on this individual, how he wants to use that individual. And once we know what we are, what we have called to do, once we, once we know what we were predestined to do, at the end of the day, when we walk in it, and our true calling, amen, we are fruitful and we multiply once we are aware of who we are in the Lord. Because God put us here on this earth for certain things that we need to do pertaining to his kingdom. Remember, the Bible says to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and everything else shall be added unto you. So that means first heaven, then earth. Amen. But while we live on earth, we got to put heaven first, right? Got to remain in the spirit of God, the spirit of truth at every and all times. Amen. So I'm just going to get right into it. What am I teaching on today? Today I'm teaching, like I said, on evangelism and teaching. Now. It's powerful because it's, it's part of the fivefold ministry, although it's not, you know, in the top, you know, okay, the, the apostles and the prophets, but at the end of the day, it's still the same thing. It's still the apostolic anointing, which is what Jesus Christ walked in, amen? Paul walked in, and many people who were under the ministry of Paul, amen? When we look at the Acts and the Romans and Timothy and all these books in here, we look at the New Testament movement, we see how they walked in the power of Christ. Of course, living righteously, of course, first and foremost. Of course, walking out of love, first and foremost. Of course, walking in truth. We see how they walked in their authority, who they knew who they were in Christ, and how these things, amen? Good evening, James. God bless you. How these things helped, amen, to show who the true church of God is and what we, what we are, how powerful we are in Christ, especially in unity, as the body of Christ, each and every member, the fingers, the toes, the eyes, the head, the nose, the mouth, you know, we all need one another, amen? So we see what happens in this fivefold ministry. We see the power, and this power is not a power of imitation, like you're imitating something that, you know, doing backflips and doing all kind of weird stuff. No, this is truly the power of God. When you can speak a prophetic word, when you can speak to the demon, say, come out, in the name of Jesus, and they come out. This is something when you evangelize, it, that spirit that is in you, that Holy Spirit is touching somebody, and the word is cutting and convicting them. Not you, not me, but the word of God is convicting them, and their lives will begin to change because of what is being done. Amen. Through the Holy Spirit, not through us, but through the Holy Spirit. And teachers and evangelists are very, very, very important in this particular, in this ministry, because of the fact that people need to be taught. Right now, we look at what's going on nowadays in this day and time. It's a problem because people are not taught. So when we look back at, especially myself, I'm going to speak for myself. When I look at the fact like, okay, oh my God, what happened? Like, why didn't I know all of this a couple of years back? What, 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 you know, what happened? What, why wasn't I taught this? 
because a lot of times even the leaders weren't taught the right way. So we need evangelists and we need teachers to teach us the right way so that way we know who we are in Christ. A lot of times people don't know who they are. They don't, they don't know the power that is in them. And there's a lot of power in us through Christ. I'm not speaking about poof, boom, boom type of power. No, I'm speaking about how God is speaking to you and then through you and telling you, okay, this person needs prayer in this particular area. This person needs some healing and deliverance in this particular area. I need you to go out and evangelize in this part of the city. I need you to go out and evangelize in this part of America. I need you to go to a whole other country and evangelize. I need you to open up missionaries. I need you to do this and that. That's what I'm speaking. I'm talking about the true fruitfulness in Christ. Good evening, Prophetess Deborah. Good evening, Marie Joseph. God bless you. Good evening, James. Good evening, Jean. God bless you guys on tonight. Excuse the background noise. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to do this with the kids, but you know, I know I got to get this teaching done. But yes, so the teachers and evangelists are not anything lower than the prophetic, anything lower than apostles. It's still the apostolic anointing. And we're going to read some scriptures here where we will see, come here, sweetheart, where we will see that they still walk in the true power and the authority of Christ. Amen. How they still caught on fire, how they still, you know, how they still uh, uh, spread the word of God and the good news and how each and every individual was still touched by it. So it's very much important for ministry, okay, to teach and to be taught. And, and that's, you know, that's one thing I do want to say that we ought to be taught. We ought to want to be taught. Um, it's not, you know, the Bible says that, you know, the teacher is not like the teacher's, you know, the best thing in the world. The teacher is to teach, okay, and people are to listen. There are to be students, but the students can reach that level of the teacher. So nobody's better than the other. So that, you know, the Bible does say that. So if we, if we are learning and we want to learn, we can get to a higher level. It's not that, okay, I got to learn from somebody my whole life. No, you can learn and reach that certain level too, because it's all about how much you go at it, just like in school. If you're in school and you're taking a test, right, are you going to go study for that test? Okay, put your, put your whole heart in it and your mind and, fo you know, focus and function. Or are you going to just put the test on the table and then tomorrow when the test comes, now, you, you know, you failed the test. No, we've got to do this thing the right way. We've got we to really, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? Lord, can I, I want to hear what you're telling me, Lord. There's something in this passage you're trying to show me. What is it, God? We've got to pay attention, focus. So we need evangelists and we need teachers. We need somebody out there. Okay, now, there is a lot of many different evangelism ministries. There is something called dream evangelism, people of God. Yes, dream evangelism. That means if God has given somebody the gift of interpretation, right, of dreams, they can have a dream evangelist ministry. That means that God can use them to speak into people's lives what this dream is, what kind of dream it is. Good evening, uh, Renita, Prophetess Renita. Is this a, a dream of, of a demonic nature? Is this um, something that the Lord is telling me? Um, God is calling you to do this, or uh, this is your type of ministry that God is showing you in these dreams. That type of mission, that type of ministry, is called dream evangelism. So there are uh, evangelists who just deal with dreams in particular. That is very prophetic. Um, that is a prophet who can do that. God speaks them directly. There's no way we as individuals can interpret a dream. Really? Okay? God has to give it. And we see that in the book of Daniel. God allows us to interpret dreams. That is something that only comes from the Holy Spirit. Good evening, Cousin Elsie. God bless you. Only that comes from the Holy Spirit. We cannot interpret dreams through sorcery. We cannot interpret dreams through um, going to um, hoodoo, voodoo, black magic, obi, or none of that. We can't do that. The real interpretation of dreams, like Daniel, comes from the prophetic. It comes from the word of God. From God giving them this wisdom, this knowledge, and this understanding and speaking directly to them and telling them what this dream is so that way they can give the information to somebody else. It doesn't come from us. It doesn't come from me. It doesn't come from you. It didn't come from Daniel. It came from God using Daniel so that way Daniel was the vessel that he used to interpret the dreams, okay? Not everybody does have this. Not everybody have that, but it is very much important. Hello, Neri. God bless you. It is very much important. So that's called dream evangelism. There is people who evangelize to children very much important. We need people to teach and evangelize to the children. Teaching and evangelism goes hand in hand, okay, because you're teaching and you're spreading the word at the same time. Can every teacher be an evangelist? Um, they can, but doesn't mean that they will. Some people may just be a teacher in that particular Sunday school, um, in their home, in their neighborhood, but there are teachers who evangelize. They do evangelist, uh, evangelistic ministry and teach too. Something like what I'm doing right now which means that they can do this on social media, 
on YouTube, Facebook, uh, Twitter, whatever platform that God told them to go on and that they're using, that is a form of evangelism and teaching at the same time where you're able to break it down. God has gifted that person to break that down. A lot of times, a prophetic individual, uh, apostolic individual, evangelist, they can do that because it's not like God is like, okay, you only stick to this one thing only. No, no, it depends on how God has graced you with it. And on top of it, how much are you willing to learn? Because see, the Bible says this. The Bible says that you need to covet. You ought to covet prophecy. That means you ought to desire prophecy strongly. So if a person desires this and it's God's will to bless them with this, they could be an evangelist who is very prophetic. So, you know, it just depends, okay? It just depends. So we all, everybody in this fivefold ministry need one another. We all work hand in hand together. It is something that we ought to do. We should not think that only one prophet can be by itself and there shouldn't be an apostle. It shouldn't be a prophetess. It shouldn't be evangelist. It shouldn't be no teacher. It shouldn't be a pastor. No, everybody needs one another in this body of Christ, okay? At some point in time, we got to get together, okay? We are not to neglect being on one accord together, okay, in unison, because we all need to teach one another. Now, of course, there is the corona pandemic, which is going on right now. So what does that mean? That means everybody may be on social media. Everybody may be on Zoom. But somehow, some way, we are getting together as a body of Christ, amen? So evangelism and teaching is very much important, just like the prophetic, the apostolic functionings, which is healing, deliverance, miracles, signs, and wonder. And we will read a lot of scriptures here where we will see how important this was. Amen. So first down, I'm going to give, I'm going to give some information pertaining to evangelists. Okay. Now it says an evangelist can work across different congregations in a city. A pastor can only serve in a capacity within the local church where he has been ordained by definition. The word evangelist comes from the Greek word eungeliste, which means someone who brings glad tidings, which means spreading the gospel, spreading out the news, someone who brings good messages, okay? That's evangelism. Now, pastor is, is a teacher, but that, that's going to be another teaching. A pastor is a teacher, but it's, it's pretty much what I was saying when I said teacher. They're like in that one little area. They don't, they can't, it's not that they can't, but they don't go out much. They normally do that, that area of that neighborhood. They can serve throughout that, that city or whatever, but they do that area, that local area. But evangelism, like I said, it can be online or however, but it reaches a lot more people, but it's still that much important. Okay. So if we look at evangelism in the Bible, right? Let's go to this here. We're going to tell you what it means in the scripture. Okay, let's, let's go to some scriptures on evangelism. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 7. Okay, it says, How lovely on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who announces peace and brings good news of happiness, who announces salvation and says to Zion, your God reigns. So this is good news. Okay, and why is it good news? Because if people are out there lost, they have been through rejection. They have been through all this stuff, rape, molestation, just having a hard time throughout their lives, suicidal. They may have committed murder. They have something, whatever they have done, they are at a place where they are, their, their, their mind is hopeless. Okay? Even people who are going through mental insanity, all kind of things, right? Bipolar, schizophrenic, all kind of disorders. When they hear this good news, they say, wow, there is hope. There is something. There is someone that can help me. There is a way out. So when you hear the gospel, amen, when the gospel is preached to them, they now have hope. So it's good news, okay? And it tells you here how beautiful, how lovely that is to hear that, right? So that's evangelism, to spread the gospel of God, the good news of Christ, and to tell people that, listen, you don't have to stay in that slavery mentality. You do not have to suffer like this. I know, listen, <laughs> when, oh God, when I heard the good news and I really, really touched me and it marinated and resided in me, my God, my life changed forever. You know, so that is good news to know that, oh, my God, okay, I'm not just going to be here on earth only, suffer, you know, but I can, I can go on and reign with Christ. I can go be with my maker one day. That is definitely good news. Amen. Now, one of the uh, evangelists out here uh, we're going to talk about today on, in the Bible is Philip, okay? Acts chapter 8 verse 12 says, but when they believed Philip preaching the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were being baptized, men and women alike. Okay, so Philip was an evangelist. 
but very much part of the fivefold ministry. Like I said, <laughs> man, his anointing was heavy. It was truly apostolic, prophetic, all of it. Even though he's called an evangelist, he went out. I mean, he did all kinds of things. We're going to see. Let me go to Acts chapter 8 here for a minute. But we're going to see all the things that Philip did. He did some powerful things. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. So let's go to Acts. Acts, Acts, Acts. Give me a second here. Acts chapter 8. And we're going to read some of what Philip did. Okay. We're going to go to verse. Acts chapter 8 verse 9. Okay. Now there was a man named Simon. Who previously practiced magic in the city. And amazed the people of Samaria. Claiming to be someone great. Now, this is a person who did <laughs> magic, so sorcery, something that definitely was not what God has called him to do. Amen. Hello, Rhonda. God bless you. Something that God didn't call him to do. Okay. It says he was <laughs> previously practiced magic. Okay. So that's sorcery. That's something demonic in the city and amazed the people of Samaria. So people were amazed at what he was doing. Okay. This marvelous, miraculous thing that they thought he was doing. So verse 10 says they all paid a great deal of attention to him. From the least to the greatest, saying, this man is what is called the great power of God. So people was uplifting him, saying, oh my God, he's really powerful in the Lord. How funny that is, people of God, because that's what's going on right now. <laughs> that's so funny. People are doing all kinds of tricks, acts, and, and, and things, and people are saying, this is truly a man or a woman of God, right? It says, this man is what is the great power of God. Verse 11 says, they were paying attention to him because for a long time, he had mystified and dazzled them with his magic. So he dazzled them. It said mystified. So that means he captured them. They were captured by what he was doing, right? Same thing that goes on nowadays. But when they believed Philip as he preached the good news about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were being baptized, both men and women. So when Philip came, yeah, they wasn't just marveled. They, were, they, they got baptized. So something different happened. They changed their life completely. They wasn't just dazzled and marveled. Their lives got changed completely. They wanted to get baptized. And it says both men and women. Now check this out. Both men and women, okay? In verse 13 it says, Even Simon believed Philip's message of salvation. So even the one who was doing all this magician stuff that everybody was looking up to, he even believed because that's how powerful God was using Philip in the evangelistic move that he was using him in, right? In that, in that apostolic anointing. Because that's how great God's anointing is. Okay? So, it says, so even, Phil, even um, Simon believes Philip's message of salvation. And after being baptized, he continued on with Philip. Okay? So, he got baptized and went on with Philip. Okay? And as he watched the testing signs and great miracles taking place, he was constantly amazed. So, now, I'm a sorcerer. I'm just using an example, right? I'm doing... Hoodoo, voodoo, magic, black magic, white magic, orange magic, whatever. And everybody's amazed at what I'm doing. But now this, this, this evangelist coming along out of nowhere. And he's preaching and teaching about Jesus Christ, whom I can't see. And um, I'm like, I'm touched. So this is what happened to Simon. He got touched and he, he followed him, it says. And he got baptized, okay? And he saw what Philip was doing, who was an evangelist, right? Philip is doing miracles. It says great miracles taking place. Okay, he, const he was constantly amazed, just watching and attesting. That means he was saying, okay, yeah, I see. I can see this with my own eyes. This is what's taking place. So he was marveled at what, now, he, now people aren't just marveling at him. Now he, who had everybody marveling at him, is now looking at Philip and seeing what God is doing in Philip's life. And now he's marveled. And now he's following him. Like, whoa, you know? So verse 14 says, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that, the people of Samaria had accepted the word of God. They sent Peter and John to them. They came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not yet fallen on any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord as, he, as his possession. So once they got baptized, they were now a believer. Now they were a child of God. But they hadn't yet received the Holy Spirit yet, right? So now they're praying for them to receive the Holy Spirit. Verse 17 says, Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, one by one, and they received the Holy Spirit. 
Now when Simon saw that the spirit was given through the laying on the hands of the apostles, right? He offered them money saying, give me this authority and power too. So that anyone, anyone whom I lay hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. So now he's watching. He's like, hold up. I got to see. I got to stop, but, I'm, but I got to see. This is truly, truly powerful. <laughs> it's not no works that's just, that you got to hide. You got to trick somebody and all of this extra stuff. It's in him. So he's like, hold up. I'm seeing more, more people, more than one person doing this. He said, no, can I pay you? I want to pay you. I want the same thing you have. So when I touch somebody, you know, that they can get the same thing too. So now what's going to happen here? In verse, in verse 18, okay. Okay, not verse 16. Verse 19, it says, saying, give me this authority and power too. So that anyone who I lay hands on may receive the Holy Spirit. Now, verse 20, but Peter said to him, may your money be destroyed along with you. Because you thought you could buy the free gift of God with money. You have no part of share in this matter because your heart, your motive, your purpose is not right with God. So repent of your wickedness of yours, of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that if possible, this thought of your heart, may, this part of your heart may be, may be forgiven unto you. So we see here, as they evangelize and they're doing all these things, right? They truly moving in the power of God as evangelists, right? Prophetic, laying of hands, signs, miracles, and wonders. Now, Simon is watching, he's paying attention, he's offering them money. But we see here that, some, that when God does something, it's a free gift. It is not something that you got to pay money for. It. That's how right now, nowadays, just not to get off too, on the subject too long, but that's why we know the real from the fake, because the Bible said judge them by their fruits. So even though he was baptized, even though he was doing all this stuff, following them and everything, he was just so amazed. He was captivated. So now he's like paying attention. He's, he's walking close to them. He's paying attention. But as he's paying attention, now he's like, hold up. They can lay hands and do this? Okay, now I want to pay for this. So when they saw that, it was like, okay, now, yeah, his heart is not in the right place. He's following us, trying to copy what we're doing, imitating just like the devil would do. What God, imitating the kingdom of God, but yet not walking in the power thereof, right? So that's what he was trying to do. And it was like, listen, pretty much I rebuke you. You know, I'm just rephrasing it. I rebuke you. Listen, it, <laughs> you need to repent and pray that God will forgive you for what you're doing and, and the tensions that you have in your heart. Because this is truly not the tension of Christ. Amen. But yes, we see the power that Philip as an evangelist was walking in. He truly was walking in the power of the Lord. Amen. So that is part of the evangelist ministry, spreading the gospel of Christ, being fruitful and multiplied. Men and women are hearing you. You know, whether you're female, whether you're a male, men and women are like children. People are being touched by it, okay? Like I said, there's many parts of it. There's children ministry with evangelism. There's teaching on, uh, on, on social media platforms. There's going out in the street, doing street ministry, doing that kind of evangelism, okay? Feeding the poor, that kind of, I mean, it, it just can go on and on. Many different, like I said, dream evangelism. Many different type of evangelistic ministries. But as long as it's the same spirit, which is the spirit of the Lord, not the spirit of Simon, the spirit of the Lord, then it's going about it the right way. You're doing what God wants you to do, not something that is of your heart. And you want people to look at you and, oh, I'm going to lay hands and do what they're doing. No, you want to do it because God, that's God's will for your life. And you want people to get turned back to God as they see you. You're like, yes, God, glory be to God. You're pushing them back towards God so that way they don't feel like it's you. They know it's the Holy Spirit. It is God, right? So that's what true evangelism is. It's spreading the gospel of Christ all around, all about as much as we can. You know, you're one person, but as much as you can, as much as God can use you, how, how, however he uses you, spread that gospel, amen? So like I said, teaching and evangelism, it, it is very close. It's just that one is more in a smaller capacity. Evangelism is more in a bigger, broader sense. Amen? Now, let's look here. Acts chapter 11, verse 20 says, But there were some of them, men of Cyrus and Cyrene, who came to Antioch and began speaking to the Greeks, also preaching the Lord Jesus. So they're, spe they're speaking to a, sp uh, a specific group of people, individuals, the Greeks. That is a form of evangelism and teaching at the same time. Amen? Romans chapter 10 verse 15 says, How will they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. 
Okay, so this is very important here in Romans chapter 10, verse 15, because it's saying, how could they preach unless they are sent? How can they get sent? Well, they believe in Christ. They become a son or a daughter of the Lord, right? An heir to his kingdom. Okay, repent, get baptized with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now God sends you. How do we know that God sends you? The evidence is in the Bible. It says, it says you were predestined in Ephesians. Not only that, it also says that go out and make disciples of all the nation. How do you go out and make disciples? You go out and you give the word of God. The word of God, remember, is powerful. It's sharper than every two-edged sword. Remember, the, in the tongue, there's in your mouth, the tongue speaks life and death. So when you're being fruitful, you're speaking life. When you're not being fruitful, you're being fruitless, then you're speaking death. So when you're speaking fruitful and you're giving out the words of Christ, it's going to multiply. It's going to catch on and catch fire. So it says, how can you preach unless you are sent? So what God is saying here too, and we got to look at it twofold. He's saying, I sent those who are preaching my gospel and my news, who are truly of the nature of me. What is in them is me. Amen. Good evening, Sir Gene. God bless you. Elaine, God bless you. What is in them is me. It's the spirit in me. Okay, the spirit is one-on-one, -on -one, okay? They got me as a soul tie. They bounded themselves with me. I am married to them, so they are walking in my power. But like I said, it's twofold. Because what is, this is a question that makes sense. How can they preach unless they are sent? So that means the other people who are doing the things that are demonic, they're preaching, they're doing something else that is not of Christ. What he's saying is they should not be preaching the gospel if they're not doing it of a godly nature, if they are doing it for their own purpose. Just like what we saw here with Simon. Amen. When we saw that Simon went to lay hands because he wanted that power. So what he's saying is, no, listen, don't do it because of that. Okay. So what he's saying is they are not sent by me if I didn't send them. Okay, if you see that they're having these fruits that are not the fruits of the, of the Lord, the, the gospel, you know, the, the fruit, the true fruit of Christ spreading and catching on like the day of Pentecost. People are believing they want to get baptized. But you see, in other words, you're seeing tricks and backflips and all of this and that and come give me your biggest sacrifice. No, he, he's trying to tell you here, like I said, it's twofold that you don't if you don't see me in them, they are not of me. But if you see me in them, I sent them. That's why the Bible says judge them by their fruits. God bless you too, woman of God. God bless you. So that is part of evangelism. That is part of teaching. Come here, sweetheart. That is part of teaching. Amen? Now, I want to look on some verses here um, pertaining, to, to, pertaining, pertaining to Paul. Because Paul was a teacher as well. Paul was evangelism, evangelist as well. He did evangelism. Go ahead. You can have it. He did evangelism because although he was an apostle and, like I said, a prophet, he still did these things. Okay, he went out and he gave the gospel. Even when he wasn't around, he was so faithful that he wrote letters and he wrote books, amen, checking on these churches, amen, that, he, that was raised up under him, amen, through the Holy Spirit. So he was evangelizing, okay? Paul did this very same thing, amen? And then we see even examples with Timothy, amen, how, how the letters are being written and he's calling Timothy his son, okay? Not his true son, but in the spirit, it's like, okay, you know, God is using me to be an example unto you, okay? I am a role model unto you. So now people are catching on through Timothy as he's teaching, as he's evangelizing. So this is what happens with evangelizing. Evangelism is powerful. It catches on, it catches on. Jesus was an evangelist. Jesus is the perfect example. Jesus and Paul is a perfect example. We're going to go on Jesus as a fivefold ministry in one individual. Because everything Jesus did caught on. I mean, my God, teaching. People marveled like, oh my God, how can this man teach like this? How can he be so young? How can he know all of this? How come we don't know all this? How can we teach differently? The Sadducees and the Pharisees, they taught differently. But Jesus was Jesus. He was from the Lord. Amen. He was from, he was from God in heaven. Amen. As his son had his spirit powerfully. So we see when you have the spirit of God, it will, your fruits, listen, the fruits will manifest. People will know that you are of Christ. You will still be fruitful in evangelism and teaching as a pastor, as a prophet, as a prophetess. Whoever you are in God, the fivefold ministry, the body of believers, which we all, like I said again, we all should be apostolic. The body of Christ should all, to some magnitude, even if it's not, like I said, the, the marvelous, uh, miraculous signs and wonders, you may not all be able to do it on that magnitude, but even with your own child or even on your own self, you should be able to pray some deliverance or some kind of healing because God is not going to call you his child and you don't have no power. 
That's not that that's not biblical. When God calls you and you know who you are, we know who we are. That's we have power. It says we have power to walk over. <laughs> Listen, scorpions, serpents, demons. We are able to decapitate them. We are able to throw them into. I cast you into the sea in the name of Jesus. We are we ought to stop them right where they stand because we have that power. Okay, so that it doesn't matter. It, listen, even some kids, there are kids. Listen, I know people think it's cute, but they'll lay hands on you. Jesus bless my mommy. That's powerful. That little child's heart and that little child's faith, that is powerful. So, you know, we look at this right here. It is powerful. We all ought to be fruitful. We all ought to be walking in the apostolic anointing. That's why the fivefold ministry is so much powerful. Because evangelism spreads on and catch fire. Healing, miracles, signs and wonders is following the evangelist. It's following the prophet, the prophetess. It's following the apostle. It's following the pastor. It's following the teacher. It's following the children in this apostolic anointing. That's why we got to be fruitful and multiply. We got to be very careful that we are not under the wrong leadership, people of God. I'm telling you, there it goes back to Simon. <laughs> I didn't even know I was going to be on that Simon like that, but there it goes. How he really tried to imitate and copy what the apostles were doing and wanted to, to sell out and do this for people to look at him and say, oh my God, he's even greater than we thought he was. So we ought to be careful, people of God. But yes, Paul was an evangelist, apostle, prophet. Um, whoever was under that anointing was very apostolic. They all spread like wildfire. People that were around them spread like wildfire. It just went on and on and on. It was very, very powerful. Amen. Okay, now look, Acts chapter 21, verse 8 says, They were graced with the gift of prophecy. Okay, now, this pertaining to Philip and his daughters, okay? Philip, that we were just talking about, he was an evangelist. But because Philip was under the anointing of the fivefold ministry, his four daughters who were virgins, okay, never married, never touched, were prophetesses. They prophesied. They were very prophetic. So even, even I don't know if you lay hands, I'm, I'm not sure what happened in that particular area, but... It went on and it caught on to the children. His four daughters were prophetic. They prophesied. So that's very powerful. We see that here. He's an evangelist. Yes, he's called to be an evangelist. But his daughters are prophesying. So we see how powerful this is. That's why I said that five for anointing. And you know, you cannot put a limit on God. You can't put God inside this little water bottle right here and say that that's God. No. That's why when people go sell water, they talk about holy water and holy oil. No, baby. Uh-uh. You cannot put Jesus in a little bottle with a little, little oil. Okay? God cannot be contained inside a, inside a container. He is unlimited. So I may be an evangelist, but I'm touching and laying hands on somebody. They are prophetess. They are an apostle. Because that's how God spreads. Okay? There's no limit. And I always repeat this verse, Acts chapter 2, verse 17. Where the Bible, in the Bible it says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall... Um, Shall dream dreams, your old men shall see visions, or vice versa, excuse me. I may have paraphrased it. But in the last days, everybody will have this spirit poured out on them because of the time that we are in and what God wants to do. He wants his move to go across like it did in Acts. He wants this thing to catch on and catch fire. That's what God wants right now. In this time of corona, it, God, may have be put, God may be pushing me off a little bit. Maybe he wants me to say some other things. But in this time of corona pandemic, you guys, Right now is the time for the church to be catching fire. Right now. However you can do it. I'm a mother of eight and I, I get on social media because God told me to do it. However you ought to do it. If you, if you ought to do it in your neighborhood. However you ought to do it. You ought to be out there preaching, prophesying, laying hands, healing, delivering signs, wonders, miracles. Whatever God has called you to do. It is not time for us to be sitting back as the church. My God, Jesus, I feel the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, my God, hallelujah. We ought to be out there prophesying, praying, healing, deliverance, teaching, ministering, children, youth, old men, young men, young ladies. It doesn't matter who it is. We ought to be doing what thus said the Lord. God called us to do greater things, people of God. This is why the fivefold ministry is so important. And women can be used greatly in this. There is not like neither male or female in this department. In, in, in a certain aspect of it, meaning, of course, the woman is not over the man's head. No, there's a certain order, which is God, okay, Jesus, okay, man and female. But what I'm saying is women can be used very much powerfully in this. 
God is not going to say, okay, I'm going to give this woman less because she's a woman. No. God is going to use both male and female in this particular area in the apostolic anointing because God just, all his desire is for his, listen, his word to spread, the power and authority that we walk in in him to spread, cast out these demons because these demons hate God and God don't like them either. Cast them out and do what I called you to do, people of God. So this is why it is so much important. Now, who was the teacher in the Bible? Plenty of them, many of them. But Jesus Christ was the greatest teacher there ever was. So we ought to see. Yes, it doesn't have a specific order. It says apostles. It says prophet, prophetess, which is all together in one. It says evangelism. And then it also says um, uh, uh, after evangelism, teachers, okay, and pastors. But Jesus was a teacher. So we can't look at teaching or evangelism like, okay, it's just in the middle. It's just it. No, it is powerful because Jesus was the greatest teacher there was. Whenever we see how he talked to the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they were all in amazement. They were all, all marveling at what he was saying. Like, oh my God, where did he get this great wisdom from? How does he know? Oh my God. And he's quoting scriptures. He's fulfilling these scriptures. He got the nerve to say it like it's him who's fulfilling. He was just so much powerful as a teacher that his word, man, the word of God through him just cut people. They was always getting offended. <laughs> the word can offend people, people of God. They were always offended by what Jesus was doing. If he didn't keep the Sabbath the way they said that he should keep the Sabbath, they was offended. But Jesus was the greatest teacher there was because he didn't teach the way they taught. He didn't teach in a religious manner, in a religious system. So we ought to see here that this type of teaching is not a religious teaching, but it's very much a teaching that shows that there is, again, no limit on what God can do. It may be the Sabbath and you can go lay hands on somebody if they are in need. And maybe the Sabbath, you can go pray for this individual. And maybe the Sabbath, maybe they need something to eat. You can go cook some food and go bring it to that individual. It doesn't matter if it's Sabbath. Jesus showed us that. He was a teacher. He showed us it doesn't matter. When it comes to my work, there shouldn't be no reason why you shouldn't do it. I'm not blocking you on this day. I'm not blocking you on that way. That day, you ought to go do what I called you to do. So he was the greatest teacher. He taught in the synagogues. He taught the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Yes, they didn't want to admit it, but they saw, man, this is something different about him, man. Why is he so different? He must be from the devil. Now they're calling him a devil. <laughs> because Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is teaching so differently. Amen. God bless you, Hippolyte. It's in. God bless you. Jesus is teaching so much differently that they're like, oh my God, maybe he's of the devil. Because it's so different. But this true apostolic teaching, okay, the, the ways of Acts, the ways of Jesus Christ, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, who were also evangelists, all the disciples were evangelists, amen? Judas, Judas didn't last long, but all the disciples were evangelists. They all went out and ministered and evangelized and taught people, okay? When they were with God, when they were with, were, with, were with Jesus, they were comfortable, okay? They probably didn't fast and pray like they should, but after that, what did he say? He said, listen, they're not going to suffer. They're not going to mourn while I'm here. They're with me. Okay, but when I leave, they're going to have to fast and pray. That's another thing. Thank you, Jesus, for reminding me for that. That's another thing. When you are walking in this fivefold ministry, because principalities and demons are going to come up against you, evangelist, teacher, pastor, whoever you are, people of God, you ought to fast. This fivefold ministry, listen, to be in the full power that God and the capacity, you ought to fast. We got to fast. We got to fast. We got to fast. Evangelist, fast. Teacher, fast. Prophet, apostle, we have to fast because the Bible says some of these things come by fasting and by praying. Amen. So we ought to make sure that we're fasting, especially doing uh, healing, miracles, signs and wonders, because the enemy is going to raise up against us. He's going to be ugly. He's going to be like a roaring lion seeking whom he, whom he can devour. And he's going to want to devour you. He's going to want to devour me because now we are attacking his kingdom and he's not playing about his. Amen. The Bible does say the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Against what? The kingdom of God. Amen? So the enemy will come up against you really hard. So that is something we do have to be careful for in the five form ministry. That's why the Bible says pray without ceasing. Watch and pray because the enemy is going to always be on a prowl stalking you to make sure that he's trying to take you out. So we do have to be careful on that aspect. Do we need to be scared? No, we don't. No, we don't need to be scared. We ought to walk in the full power of God knowing that God has our back. Amen? Let's look at a couple of more verses here. Okay? It says in Luke chapter 4 verse 15. And he began teaching in their synagogues and was praised by all. Just what I was saying here. Who is he? Christ. 
as Christ is teaching, his teaching styles and techniques are different than everybody else. Everybody can say all this hallelujah, wonder, 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 wonder all this stuff, and sound so elaborate, which speaks to very, very much these times, the people who go to, a, a lot of times people who go to seminary school or whatever other type of theology school, a lot of times they speak very much more elaborate, okay? They know how to speak very eloquently, but however, Jesus Christ spoke with wisdom. The people that are apostolic speak with a lot of wisdom, okay, under this anointing. So, it's not something that they try to do, it's just what is in them, amen? So, although somebody may sound good, they may look good, excuse me, what is in that individual that God is using? The Phillips, the prophets, the prophetess, the Pauls, the Moses, the whomever God is using nowadays, what comes out of their mouth is going to be wise words of God. It's going to be wisdom. It's going to be truly fruitful. So like I said, it says here, and Jesus began to teach in all, okay, all praise. And people are looking like, oh my God, how does he get all that information? Because of the spirit that is in him, amen? The spirit that is in him. Mark chapter 6, verse 34 says, when Jesus went ashore, he saw a, he saw a large crowd and he felt compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them in many things, okay? So... We see that Jesus had a heart for people. When evangelizing, when in this true church of God, when we are in the apostolic anointing, okay? Listen, you got to have a heart to do what God wants you to do. You got to have a heart to do God's will. You got to have a heart for people. You got to feel compassion, how God felt compassion. Because sometimes people may come up against us, right? People may be like, oh my God. Oh my God, I just get tired. We still got to walk in love, okay? So we still have to have a heart to, to, to come at them with love and come at them with wisdom. So, for instance, there are times, me, myself, good evening, uh, Nia, God bless you, Albert, God bless you. For instance, there are times, even me, myself, I like to get my testimony because I know me better, better than anybody else knows me, right? So, if I'm, if I'm walking in Burger King or I'm going to Domino's and I'm going to go order some food, right? And somebody may be having a bad day. God always reminds me, listen, this individual is very rude to you, but they're having a bad day. Understand where they're coming from. So sometimes I look at them and I say, you know what? God bless you. God bless you. Have a blessed day. You must be having a bad day. Because uh, we have to feel people. We have to have that compassion. We got to understand that somebody may be going through some hard times. Somebody may have died in their family. They may have lost a loved one. Maybe they had just broke up. Whatever the situation is, they may be homeless. Whatever the situation is, we still have to have a compassion. We got to win souls. How do we win souls? Not only by what comes out of my mouth. Remember, be fruitful and multiply. Judge them and know them by their fruits. So whatever they're doing... Their actions is going to show. So you can evangelize even with your actions. How you, re how, you, how you respond to people is showing what is in you. So people, I remember one time I went to Walmart a couple of years back, like 2017. And I would always go to this Walmart in North Miami Beach. At the time I was living up there. And um, this lady, I was pregnant. This lady would always tell me every time. She said, I like seeing you. I said, I said oh, why? She said, I like seeing you because she said, you're different. I said, okay, I'm listening to it. She said, every time I see you, you're always so sweet. You're always so soft-hearted. You make me happy. You make me feel happy. That's, in, in a way, that's evangelism. Because every time they're seeing you, they, they're looking forward. To, when they see you, they're having a bad day at the supermarket, at this Walmart. And every time they see all this, they're like, oh, my God, oh, my God. But when they see, oh, God, thank you, Jesus. Something, some light is coming up. Some, somebody who is happy is coming up about me. They're going to make me feel blessed today. That is a form of evangelism. Your fruit. How you acting in front of people is a form of evangelism because they're seeing Christ in you. So, you, you know, you are being a witness of what God is. Amen. So there's many different shapes and forms of evangelism and teaching people. But like I said, it's about the sheep. I said this the other day. It's not about just one individual. This is where sometimes the church, the full body of Christ, the church messes up because sometimes we go after just one individual. Everybody is important. But sometimes we focus on just one, only one, and we forget about everybody else. And it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be about favoritism. It should be about each and everybody trying to go out and help everybody. Do you just say, oh, just forget it with them, to heck with them? No, you don't say that. You still pray for them, okay? But if you've done all you can do, you still got to get to the other people. Because we don't know how much time we have left, especially in this day and age, people of God. We don't know how much time we have left. And God really wants the move of his church to really be powerful like it was in, the, in, the, in Acts, man, in the day of Pentecost at that time where Paul and, and, and Timothy and, and Philip and all these people were, 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 were doing signs, miracles, and wonders and were teaching and being fruitful. This is what God wants right now, amen? 
This is what God wants right now. John chapter 7 verse 14 says, But when it was, when it was now the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and began to teach. Everywhere Jesus went, he was always teaching. Whenever there was an opportunity, Jesus taught. Whenever there was an opportunity with Paul, he taught. So evangelism and teaching go hand in hand. Like I said, even for the pastors, which I will be doing probably on Friday. Listen, it doesn't matter. It's not nothing lower on the scale. It's not nothing higher. Remember, the Bible does say, listen, the teacher, okay? He, the, the students have to listen, but the teacher is teaching them. At the end of the day, the teachers are, listen, the students ought to be so much fruitful that they ought to get up to the level of the teacher. This is what the Bible says. They ought to get up to the level of that teacher because they're so fruitful. This is what the apostolic will do, people of God. This is what it will do. It will catch on. People will truly be understanding. They will be wise. Their spiritual eyes will be unblinded. Amen. And we can be fruitful in all that we're doing. Every opportunity there was, Jesus taught. He evangelized. He prophesied. He healed. He did signs, miracles, and wonders. Okay, because he wanted to make sure that his work on earth for the little time that he was here on earth, he wants to make sure that he did what thus said the Lord. Amen. And that's what we ought to do. However we can do it. There are times that people talk, people of God. It doesn't matter what people say as long as you're doing what God has called you to do. There are times, even myself, where people may say, oh, you're only on YouTube, you're only on Facebook. It doesn't matter. This is what God told me to do. Okay? So it doesn't matter how God told you to do it. Whatever God told you to do, you do it as much as you can. You see, my baby is in my head right now. I don't like to do it with my kids. Because I like to get, you know, the full attention. Everybody can understand what I'm saying. But at this opportunity, the Lord unctioned me to do it, so I did it. Amen. I did it. It's not always about, you know, being exactly comfortable and looking a certain way. I still got to do it. Thus says the Lord, people of God. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Whatever platform, wherever God put you to do, wherever he told you to go, however you do it, that you just go do it. Thus says the Lord, people of God. Evangelize, teach, preach. This is why we ought to all be up here at some point in time teaching about what God has called the church to do. God did not call the church to do, and I'm not picking at nobody, I'm just speaking the true word of God, backflips and hopscots and jumps and, 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 and all kind of stuff. God said to teach, preach, prophesy, heal, deliver. Let these people get set free from their slavery mentality. Get set free from voodoo and witchcraft and obia. Get set free from all the stuff that they're suffering from, generational curses. This is what I called you to do. Not to do backflips, not to be asking for a million dollar seed, not to be saying I want cars and I want this and I want that. Listen, you're seeking first the kingdom of God and everything shall be added unto you. However God wants to and desire to bless you, he will bless you. It's not about... I got to hear this tickle my ear prophecy. I got to hear this tickle my ear evangelism. I got to be told that I can walk, I can walk in the world and walk, walk uh, uh, in church at the same time. To, to the, my, feet is, my feet is in the world and my feet is in God. No, it's not about that. It's not time for that. It's time out. It's not time for the play play no more. It is time to walk on one accord. Get your flesh under subjection. Go evangelize. Go make disciples of all nations. Go be, go be fruitful and multiply. Go teach. Even if it's in your own home to teach the children. A mother like myself, you can teach. I don't care if you got 12. I don't care if you got 8. I don't care if you got 2 kids. Teach. Teaching is powerful. Just to teach a child. Just to know that God gave you the child to teach. That is powerful. Teaching online. Teaching, on the, teaching in your neighborhoods. If God said, go give this neighbor a prophetic word. God said, go do this. Go pray for this individual. There was one lady I was, um, one day I was at, at, at Pollo Tropical. <laughs> and I was looking at this lady and I saw she was so sad. Her legs was messed up and, and I'm looking at her and she always sees me. She always talks to me. And I said, okay. I said, I'm going to pray for you. I said, give me your number. And God led me one day. It wasn't right then and there, but one day God led me and I sent her a prayer. And it was a couple of weeks later. And when I sent her the prayer, she was like, oh, my God. Oh my. She was so touched. The next time she saw me, she said, oh, my God. Thank you. Oh, my God. You don't know. Thank you. That's what we ought to do. Even in the Pollo Tropical line. Even, even in the Walmart with a basket full of groceries. Even in the, uh, the barbecue stand, wherever. We ought to be fruitful and multiply and do what does says the Lord. Evangelize. Teach. However you got to do it, it doesn't matter, people of God. We got to, man, this time and day and age is not, oh my God, it's no joke, people of God. It's no joke. Corona is not here. I know people say that is of the enemy. I know they say it's a pandemic, P-L-A-N-demic. 
not necessarily, okay? It's not necessarily man doing this, people of God. There are times in the Bible where we see, I read Isaiah chapter 29 and 30 the other day. There are times in the Bible where we see that God will get his people in order some way, some shape, some form. He will get his people in order because he's calling the church to holiness. He's calling the church to consecration. He's calling, to ch he's calling the church to stop playing games. Stop saying that this is me. I'm not, I'm not doing backflips. I'm not doing this. Stop saying that that's me. That's not me. I'm doing this. I'm doing what the Bible says. Healing, deliverance, preaching, loving, teaching, prophesying. I'm doing that. I'm showing that the kingdom of God is on fire. I'm showing that God has power and authority over everything. That's what God wants us to do, people of God. Yes, with this COVID-19, this is the best way to get the message everyone can hear and see. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, and so that's the thing. Everybody was downplaying. People were downplaying YouTube and social media. But God even has a plan with YouTube and social media, Facebook, and every other thing out there. Yes, the enemy meant for bad, but God meant for good. All things work together for them that are called by the Lord. Remember, it said, <laughs> it says, how can they preach unless I sent them? Hey, God is using the very same thing that the enemy was using to get those half-naked people on there and all these people who look good and people are dating all on social media. God used that same platform to have somebody teach. In the same, like right now with, with the pandemic, people got no choice but to sit in their house. A lot of jobs have been lost, but God said, listen, I got to get you to hear my word however you got to hear it. It may be a mother of eight, like myself. It may be a mother of 12. It may be somebody who just, who used to be homosexual. It may be somebody who used to be this. It doesn't matter. They may be an ex-murderer or ex-whoever. Now I've called them to do this at this time. All I want them to do is to say what I told them to say. Preach the word of God directly from the Bible. And when they do that, my word is going to spread. Seeds will multiply. People of God, this is true evangelism. This is true teaching. Doing and imitating what Christ did. Christ didn't get up there and go, ha, who, ha, ha. Christ didn't do all that. Christ is not about theatrical stuff. He is not an actor. The devil is an actor and imitator, but Christ is what he is. He is all power and all glory. So people of God, this is true evangelism. This is truly teaching by just getting in the word of God for yourself, getting to know God, getting to, get, getting to know who God has called you to be. And sometimes you will not know unless somebody is up here like me teaching. There were times there's some things I didn't know until I really, I heard it. And I was like, oh, wow, that seed fell in me and that seed took root. And that seed was like, uh-uh. Now, nah, God called me to do greater than this. God didn't just call me to just be a mother. A mother's powerful. But God didn't just call, I feel something else missing. God called me to prophesy. God called me to do this. God called me. That's what will happen because somebody is teaching. Somebody is truly doing what God has called them to do. So now you know who you are. Now I know who I am. Sometimes it takes the pandemic. Sometimes it takes somebody to get HIV. I'm going to be real. Sometimes it takes somebody to get cancer. Sometimes it takes for them to get that, almost be at their deathbed. And then next thing you know, that last stage four cancer, that HIV, where they thought they was about to die, something, something turned around. There's a miracle, a sign and a wonder. Now they are completely healed because God wanted to make a testimony out of them. So now their very life, I told God for myself when I had them three strokes, I said, Lord, make me a walking miracle for your glory. And that's what God did. And I had the faith when I told him, I said, make me a walking miracle. Heart failure, heart failure. Uh, every medicine I took, asthma, allergy attack. Every time I turn around, pregnant, in the hospital, sick. Everybody looking at me, oh, poor girl, you may die when you have this baby. Oh, the baby might die. You may die. The baby may not make it. You may not make it together. This and that, have a miscarriage, have an abortion. No. I said, God, make me a walking miracle for your glory. And that's what he did. I got the report that my heart was full functioning. I was fully healed of asthma and allergies and everything else. Everything that I suffered for for 20 years for my whole life. God make a walking miracle out of me. This is the true nature of the church. This is the true nature of God. We ought to lay hands of our own self. We ought to wake up from a dream. Listen, I, people might call me a radical of Christ. They may call me crazy. They may call me whatever they want. It doesn't matter. So be it. I look in the mirror at times when I wake up and I don't feel right. When I feel like I had a dream that was not of God, that was of the enemy, I look at myself in the mirror. I say, I bind it up in Jesus' name. I command you to flee. This is the power of God, people of God. Self-deliverance. Listen, be self-examine yourself and say to yourself in that mirror, I command you to flee. Whatever spirit is trying to operate in me, I command you to go in Jesus' name. 
This is truly walking in the nature of Christ, people of God. That's what it takes. That's what it takes. Amen? To examine yourself. It takes all of that. It takes to get yourself in the Word to fast. Fasting is the key, people of God. Amen. Lay here. Honey, I do it almost every day. I put my hand on my belly, and I say, every seed that is not like Christ, I command you to flee. In Jesus' name, you shall manifest in Jesus' name. And this is what God is calling us to do. Evangelize, okay? We are to get together as a body of Christ, like I said on social media, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Zoom, whether it's Facebook, whatever, however it is. We ought to get together as a body of Christ and walk together in this five-fold ministry. Teach, evangelize, prophesy, healing, deliverance, miracles, signs, wonders. Whatever God has called you to do, however he graced you to do it, we ought to go and catch fire for the Lord. Right now in the pandemic, that's the best time. Everybody is, is without hope. Not everybody, but a lot of people in this world is without hope. And right now they need some hope. If they got to use a mother of eight, if they got to use a mother of three, if they got to use an ex-stripper, if they got to use an ex-prostitute, if they got to use an ex-pip, whoever they got to use, an ex-murderer like Paul, it doesn't matter. God said, go preach and teach evangelize. He gave you the evidence of the Bible when he said, go out and make disciples of all the nations. You shall do signs, miracles, and wonder in my name. When I leave, you shall do greater. This is what God said. This is evangelism. This is teaching. This is preaching. Like I said, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to pick at nobody. But not out of breath stuff. Uh, uh, no. I have seen, oh my God, I have seen some things. I know I'm not the only one. I have seen people do backflips. I have seen people jump on tables. I have seen people crawl on the floor. That's not what God did. He did not do all of that. God spoke. Sometimes he spoke softly. Sometimes people knew he was angry. But he spoke the word of God. Evangelize, preach, teach, prophesy, signs, miracles, and wonders. But when you do it, let me tell you something. Make sure you're doing it with the word of God on point, precisely with what God says. Not what we say. Not, oh, go get some turpentine and go clean your house and the spirit will leave. Go put a candle under your bed. Go put a cup of water under your bed. No, 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 no. That is not, that is not of God. A lot of times people are telling, no, baby, that, that listen, don't mix. With, that's. The true church of God cannot mix the worldly ways, the demonic ways of voodoo and hoodoo, obia, with true prophecy and true gifts and true evangelism of Christ. We got to be careful what we say to one another, people of God. Don't, if, listen, if you don't know, you don't know. A lot of times we are walking in ignorance. But when you get to know, let's not do it. Okay? Somebody needs some healing. They need some deliverance. They are to pray in the scriptures. The Bible says that by your stripes, Lord God, by your stripes, I am healed. In the name of Jesus. It says your word is a sharper than a two-edged sword. And right now I decapitate the enemy out of my life in Jesus' name. This is how we ought to be walking in that power. When we tell each other, go, go clean your house with ammonia. Go clean your house with this. And go, that's not going to work. You have to fight the spirit in the spirit. The flesh cannot fight the spirit. Okay? You got to fight the spirit in the spirit. Amen? So we got to make sure that we're doing things properly. This is why we all, who, listen, if God has called you to prophesy, prophesy. If God has called you to teach, teach. If he called you to evangelize, evangelize. Okay? I'm going to be doing the pastors and the teachers next. And when I do that, we're going to see how the church should, should, S-H-O-U-L-D, operate when there's the leaders, the pastors, and how they should not operate. Amen? Because right now, my God, there's a lot going on in the church. My God, there's really a lot of mess going on in the church and God wants his church to raise up shine be the light of the world amen not imitate and do that is which is of the enemy amen people of God I thank you for your time father God in the name of Jesus Lord God I come to you as humble as I know father God Lord God each and every individual that is on this live each and every individual that is watching right now whoever will watch later on father God those that have watched Lord God on today Lord God bless their ears Lord God anoint their ears Lord God unclog their ears father God in the spirit realm Lord God let them hear your word, Father God. Close it off to the enemy, Father God. Lord God, their eyes, Lord God, unblind them, Father God. Take off the blinders off of their eyes, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Allow them to see spiritually, Father God. Allow them to see that this right here is not a plan of, of, of what the world wanted to do, but this is something that you have done. This is something that you have called us to wake up and rise in, Father God, just like the time of Egypt and Moses, Father God. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that each and every individual that is watching this live on today, that they be fruitful and they multiply. I pro I, listen, I, listen, in the name of Jesus, I declare and I decree that you shall be fruitful and multiply 
in the name of Jesus, that you shall go out and evangelize, that you shall go out and teach, that you shall go out and prophesy in the name of Jesus. I declare it and I decree it by faith. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Faith without works is dead. So by faith, you shall go out. Start today, start tomorrow and go teach the word of God, whether it's in your home, whether it's in the library, whether it's in your school, whether it's at your job, go out and teach the word of God. Father God, we thank you, Lord God. We lift you up and we bless your holy name on today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. You guys have a blessed night in the Lord.